Hi, kindergartners. Today you're going to be glazing your um, fruit bowl and pinch pot. So the next time we're here, we're going to be painting the fruits. And I've done this project with kindergarten a few times. And um, the problem with the project was, in my opinion, the fruits were so realistic, but I thought um, there's one thing missing. And that, other than the realistic fruit that you guys are making, because you're doing so well with that, um, is the realistic bowl. So this is a really good pinch pot, but it's painted. And what we're gonna do today is called glaze. You say glaze? Yes, glaze. So glaze is nice and shiny, um, kind of like the real mugs and dishware and glassware you would have at home. It's called glazeware. So when you fire the clay, it's called bisqueware, like this white part. Once the clay is nice and dry and then in the kiln, after we glaze it, it's called glazeware. Now glaze is very different than paint. When we put it on there, it's really light in color. And then when we put it back into the kiln, it becomes darker and shiny and bright in color, kind of like glass. So it's called glazeware. These are the differences in the colors you'll see. So I'll put your color options up on the board for you, but we do have some choices today. You're gonna do one base color for your bowl and you're going to add patterns if you have time for it to dry, you need to get a thumbs up for that. So your options for your colors are black, white, yellow, black, white, yellow, green, light blue, dark blue, pink, and red. So the colors do dry a little darker. Now the first thing you're gonna do, my friends, is you're gonna take your fruits out of your bowl, which has been fired in the kiln. So they're in the bisque stage. You're gonna place them down, let me show you, on a placemat. So it's a little, little paper. You're gonna have a paper in front of you. You're gonna place them on the placemat. Now, this is gonna serve as two things. It's gonna be your placemat for the glaze. Um, it's also gonna be your name tag. So I'm gonna now get a pencil and I'm gonna write my name on this. Miss Olson. Um, so that we know that this is our fruits and no one else can take them. This will be our placemat for painting for next time too. So I'm not glazing fruits today. We can't glaze those. We need to have the bottom of our pot empty. So I'm going to show you where not to paint today. You can also flip yours over and make a circle at the bottom. We don't want to glaze anywhere at the bottom where it could get stuck because when your glaze is in the kiln, it becomes really... Um, wet and sticky like honey, really hot honey, and it could get stuck in the kiln and not come out. So we don't wanna glaze anything that sticks to the kiln. We're not glazing our fruit either. So I'll probably maybe take that away at some point, but put your um, fruits away from this. Put your name on this so we know it's your fruits without your name on it. Now I'm gonna get a medium fluffy brush out. And I'm gonna pick one base color. Now you can do one base color inside and one outside. Um, so I'm gonna pick one base color for the inside. I'm gonna do this light blue. And on my clay, I'm gonna start glazing it. Now the key is to really cover it up. Now remember your clay has been in the kiln, so it's really fragile still. Just like a mug at home, if you drop it, it will break. But if you treat it nice, it can stay forever. So I'm gonna glaze the inside with one color. You want it to be a really thick, nice two layer glaze, two layers. You wanna not see any white spaces inside and you want it to be fully filled up. If it's not, it won't be shiny after it comes out. Now, after you're done with your brush, I need to rinse. So I'm gonna swirl in my cup, swirl and wipe. Now um, I can do the sides. So I'm gonna now get my glaze and I'm gonna glaze the sides. Now you could flip it to get to the sides, but you cannot glaze on the bottom. So make sure you have that circle drawn to remind you. So I'm gonna now do the outside edge. I'm using my medium fluffy brush. This is a really nice art material. So I'm not gonna get it all over the place. Hands or table, we wanna just use what we need so we can use more of it later. We don't wanna waste it. And now I'm gonna finish glazing the whole thing, covering it up with two layers, no empty spaces, really cover it up, not at the bottom. And then I'm gonna flip it up. 
And I'm going to finish this area here. Right here. So I'm seeing now, remember with um, 3D works, you want to turn it from all angles. So when I just turned it to a new angle, I realized I missed some of my blue. So I need to finish filling that. So I have an inside color and an outside color. And if you want to go above and beyond, you can get your small brush. Pick one more color for this empty space here where we flipped it, the rim of it. Otherwise, you could just keep it at two colors. But you can fill in bases. Now, if you get a thumbs up because you finished that quickly and it's dry, I'll let you add a layer of pattern. But I think we're, we're going to be good with those three base colors. If it's really dry and ready for you to add a pattern, I'll show you what to do. I could now carefully pick it up and add kind of inside the pattern I created another layer. But your work would have to be finished with base and dry in order to earn that last pattern layer. So we're finishing glaze, we're doing inside color, outside color, and rim base colors. Make sure it's all filled up. Um, take your time. You do not want a watery brush. So you can rinse your brush between colors, but you want to squeeze it out because you don't want a lot of water on there. You want a full, thick layer. All right, have a wonderful glazing day, and I'll see you next time.